get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInspired.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Atari, many more. This is part of the Pro Podcaster series where we talk about the behind the scenes of how pro podcasters work. Today, we have Colt Cabana. He is the longest... Hey, Colt. He is the longest running wrestler to wrestler podcast in existence and he's been doing the Art of Wrestling podcast weekly since 2010. He's interviewed people like CM Punk, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and many more. He's been entertaining crowds around the world, literally, as a professional wrestler for over 17 years. Australia, Canada, Europe, Japan, Mexico, all over the U.S. And he even wrestles in cult underground places like Insane Clown Posse's Gathering of the Juggalos. And he's been featured on Mark Maron's podcast, and he has a cartoon version of himself as a billboard off the highway here in Chicago. Colt, thanks for joining me. Um, thank you. Glad to be here. Good to see you. How are you, my friend, Jeremy? So, Colt, I always ask, since this is Inspired Insider, and two things. One, what's been the lowest moment, and what's been the proudest moment? Uh, what's been the lowest moment, and how you push through? Uh, being fired from WWE was that was my dream. That's what I worked for for yeah. years to get there. And um, there were so many aspects to what like it was such a big machine and it was such a big like the way they worked. It was such a giant corporation that they, you know, it, it made me realize how if I ran a business, how I wouldn't want to run a business. And essentially, now I run a business. Yeah. What's an just, example? What do you mean? What was one thing that you did? You want to do the uh, opposite? And if you get in trouble for saying it, you know, don't say it, obviously. But it, but. It's like, I don't think they got to know their talent well enough. They hired these people and they, they, gave, they gave them the idea of like, you might be, like, we know you're good enough to, you know, and eventually be a millionaire and a billionaire. And then they didn't get to know the people who they were inside. Yeah. And it's a little bit of what inspired me to do the, the podcast. It's like, I want, to, I want people to know who these people really are. And I didn't feel that. You know, Vince McMahon I had a five minute conversation with the guy below him. I had a, you know, didn't even talk to ever. And that was the guy who fired me. You know what I'm saying? So it's like they didn't even know who I was. Yeah. And I'd worked so hard. I worked 10 years to get to that point. And right. all it took was somebody looking on the thing going, who's that guy? And someone else going, oh, I don't know. And then, then I was fired the next day. And they didn't know all the stuff that I could bring to the table, to which I eventually brought to the table for myself. Right. So it's almost like in one question, the lowest point was what brought me to my highest point. Yeah. Because I realized that there was I had value that no one else was going to realize that I was the only one that was able to bring it to the table and show the world is if I did it myself. And I made it I I real I came to this like it was a wake up call that like no one's going to want to you to be the best you can be except you you're the only you're the only one you have the most you know invested in you and of course you know and I don't blame those guys like they're looking out for their own thing right. of course. Now I'm looking out for my own thing, and that's me and my industry and in my business. And like I know, like I want to be nicer to people below me, but there's really nobody below me. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of just me. And so the so this idea that I've done this kind of you know with the help of all the fans and everything, but like you know I've just I've done this kind of myself because I believed in myself the most, and that was thanks to the wake up call to the to my dream being taken away from me. And now realizing that, like, I had different dreams and I have different aspirations. How did they, did they give you even give you a reason when it happened? They gave me a, a, a stock line that they were giving everyone at the time, which is called Creative Has Nothing For You, which is the, their creative team comes up with ideas and they say, sorry, Creative Has Nothing For You. So, you know, you can see on YouTube, uh, I, me and my friend Marty DeRosa, we started a web series called Creative Has Nothing For You. Uh, <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> And it's um you know it's a comedy mm. it's a comedy show about different you know it's about me the wrestler talking to mm. the management Marty plays the management and um and that's kind of how I went into all of it like I went into it you could tell like just that idea like you could tell I was pissed off and I was like ready to I had a chip on my shoulder yeah. and I was gonna but I was gonna use comedy as like my defense mechanism and that's kind of like how I've worked like this whole thing like 
and, and I was driven to like prove people wrong, you know. And just in the idea that they that's how they fired me, saying creative has nothing for you. And then I started a web series that's that's called Creative Has Nothing For You. <laughs> kind of sums it up. <laughs> what is it like when you get there though? You know, because yeah, you, you get called up to the the big leagues, right? WWE. Because I remember yeah. you it was in Kentucky, right? Or Yeah, they moved me to Louisville. Because I think and, I was in Louisville at the same time, maybe around the same time. And um, you knew you had just moved back, but you knew the area very well. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they moved me to Louisville, and then they moved me to Tampa, and like those were their developmental leagues. So they signed me to a contract. The day they offered me a contract was one of the greatest days of my life. Yeah. And but then I knew like there was a lot of work going forward. And then the day I had my debut match, I, that feeling cannot be taken away from me. Everything mm. afterwards was was awful. Yeah. You know, it wasn't good. My career did not go well. But the idea that they were like, Colt, you're on the team. It's amazing. Yeah. Go have your first match. You know, it was such a wonderful. Um, such a wonderful feeling for me and that feeling was great you know a lot of stuff around it wasn't but i'll always have that specific feeling yeah yeah so you would say that would be the proudest moment after you know turning that you know um the creative nothing for you and your podcast what what uh, has been one of the prouder moments i mean it's all just like it's not like and i think that's the most important thing is that like i don't you can't just define like once you do something you then you got to move on to the next thing like you can't it's not like one big, like I've had a lot of, of wonderful moments. I mean, you know, I, I don't know. I wrestled one of my heroes, Johnny Saint in England, uh, you know, in front of a thousand people, in Sheffield, England. He was yeah. six, he was 68 at the time. And, uh, he was a guy who I love and love. And then I had him on my podcast. That was a proud moment yeah. too, you know, yeah. uh, you know, maybe getting a nice, I, my, my, my proudest moment is, is being able to eat every day is every day I go out yeah. and I, and I and I buy my lunch, or I pay my you know my bills, and I'm doing that without even really doing a job. Like I I have money because I do what I do. That's what makes me proud. Yeah. You rock, Colt. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I am. I'm not uh... the rock. I'm Colt. <laughs> Different guy. Different guy. Damn, I've been, I've been doing this all wrong. wrong. Yeah, way better story than I have. <laughs> way more money. Thanks, Cole. I really appreciate it. I will see you at Podcast Movement or before. Yeah, perfect. All right. Thanks Go to... ColeCommanda.com, at ColeCommanda on Twitter, at ColeCommanda on Instagram. I had a Vine that went viral. It had 10 million loops. You can go see that. What is it? I put a sticker on a bodybuilder wrestler friend of mine, and he couldn't get it, and everyone laughed, and then stole it. <laughs> World Star Hip World Star Hip Hop stole it. Uh, buy some merch and come to a local show. And uh, uh, podcast wise, listen to my podcast Art of Wrestling on iTunes and uh, check out uh, Howl FM and uh, just give it a shot. For a and YouTube channel, uh, Colt Commander on Wrestling, but that you can find that through ColtCommander.com. All right. Yeah, I have a week. I have a weekly. I have a weekly uh, YouTube series. It's called Worst Promo Ever. It's hilarious. Where, where it's um, normally the guy, the wrestler gets interviewed. And I pretend like I'm the dumbest wrestler of all time. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> and that way, I also I'm promoting my upcoming show through that, so people know what show I'm going to and who I'm wrestling. So yes, it's a lot. There's a lot behind why I do it. I suggest everyone check out Worst Promo Ever. It is actually hilarious. So, I get. I think we get all the plugs in. We did it. Amen. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other. If you find the same right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand 